Alright. Questions? Any questions? Questions? No questions. All right. So we left off. We left off, ladies and gentlemen, where we have this DNA that we inherit. Right? We have this DNA that we inherit. That DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. That means that the basis that this double, so DNA is one, it's double stranded. That means there's two strands. It's a double stranded, uh, we call it an alpha helical structure because it, it it's like a staircase. So it raises, just like a staircase does, just like these helical staircases in these old uh, Gothic churches, right? That they, you know, you got to get up, you got to get up to the, the steeple, right, where the, the bell tower is or whatever. You got to take this really, it's like a really narrow, narrow, narrow uh, stone kind of case, right, staircase that goes up into a tower. Oh, and then, or it's like an actual wrought metal Right, you, you look at it, it's like real thin, but it's really strong, right? You wouldn't think it's very strong, but you walk on it, and people walk on it for centuries, and it'll get you up there. Well, that's how DNA is, right? Thank God the, thank God for Rose, Rosalind Franklin, who was the female, the ingenious female, who figured out how to take uh, x-rays of these crystalline structures that Watson and Crick took a look at, and were like, oh, well, that fits in quite nicely with our theory. And then they're the ones who got credit for it when it was her who visualized DNA. Okay? So if it wasn't for her visualization of DNA through X-ray technology, they would have never figured out the three-dimensional... Watson and Crick would have never figured out the three-dimensional structure of DNA. You understand? So hats off to the ladies, right? Okay? Um, Double-stranded, alpha helix. So it rises as a staircase. One goes... One strand goes in one direction. Well, the other is going in the opposite direction, and it's and it's uh, in the way in which the bases are 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 laying in the strand. However, the bases themselves will go inward, and they will participate. Interestingly enough, let me redraw this. So, if I were looking at a stretch of DNA that had a um, T A. The other strand going the opposite direction would read T A T. And interestingly enough, between T's and A's, there are two hydrogen bonds. Between each A and each T, there are two hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are what type of forces, ladies and gentlemen? What type of forces are hydro hydrogen bonds? Are they intramolecular or intermolecular? They're intermolecular forces. Remember I told you hydrogen bond is a form of intermolecular molecular forces. Because what are we talking about? We're talking about a molecule and another molecule. Good morning. All right? A molecule, another molecule. It just so happens that this molecule and this molecule are actually physically stuck together. Did everybody hear me? They're, they're stuck together. Each of these are bases. And that line is actually the sugar phosphate backbone. And then remember I told you that the base of each nucleotide is going to be reflected inward so that the base of the other strand will associate in hydrogen bonding, which is a form of intermolecular force. Wait, 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 wait. So you said which one is together, the A and T, or the other A and T? Which one is stuck together? No, well, these are stuck together covalently. These are hydrogen bonds. These are temporary bonds. These are not, they're not fixed covalent bonds. And that's important, because the fact that these are so unstable, they're stable enough to get them to stick, but they're, they're not they're not so stable as if to prevent 
us from opening up the DNA when we need to. Do you understand? Why would I want to open up my DNA? If this is a strand of DNA, why would I want to open it up? To get codes. Do everyone agree? Why would I need the code? For what? What do I need the code for? To recreate. So either I'm going to recreate to make a new cell, which means I'm going to duplicate my DNA. Do everyone hear me? Yes. So either I'm going to unzip the code so I can redo more DNA. They call that rep. Replication. And replication is DNA duplication. What does that mean? What does that mean? Copy yourself. You copy yourself. Guys, do I want to copy my DNA before I make another cell? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Ah, so now we're talking about cell cycle. Apologize. Again, you don't have to do my crappy drawing. All you have to do is write the words and then look them up. Sorry, this is G2. And this is mitosis or meiosis. What's meiosis for? Sex, baby, sex. Oh, Here we go. Sex. sex. Oh, You're going to say it loud? <laughs> sex! I get a microphone downstairs. Good, right? That's what it's about, isn't it? Man, that's the only way we got here. Yeah? The copulation of sperm in the female reproductive tract. Sperm swam up the upper one third of the fallopian tube, found the egg. Egg met the, it, it, the sperm met the egg, only one sperm fertilizes one egg. Understand? So if you're if you got a twin out there and you guys aren't identical, then that means there must have been two eggs in mommy's reproductive tract and two sperm. Doesn't necessarily mean the sperm had to come from the same donor. Hey, I'm not judging nobody. I'm not judging nobody, all right? It's all good. We had a case, right, when I was taking genetics, right? And we had a case, Dr. Tracy was working on a case over at FIU, where a paternity suit, female comes in, I'm suing my husband. You know, take care of my kids. And then, what, they did the paternity test, they found out the kids were twins. But one of them wasn't his. <laughs> Yeah, man, freaky freaky. Uh, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. Yeah, it's that's more than possible. Trust me, it's more than possible. People like threesomes. I'm not judging. When the door's closed, I'm not judging. Right? And you guys, you can't judge either. Healthcare workers, you can't judge. You can't judge. Someone shows up with a phone up their rear end. You can't judge. You just gotta go in there and dig it out. <laughs> All right. The show intern. I think on the second or third episode of the show intern, and one of the one of the patients comes in with a phone stuck up his butt. <laughs> and of course, who do they get? They get the lowly resident to pull it out, right? No, I'm sorry. The third year med student is the one who gets stuck having to extract the phone. And the guy, the guy likes it so much that he keeps sticking stuff up in there so he can see the resident. I mean, the, the third. It's watch the show. It's really funny. It's, it's, watch the show. It's really funny. It's super funny. I like to hear untold stories of the. Oh yeah, no, those are real. Those are intense. Now I can tell you there is a real story. So when I was a kid in Philadelphia, there was a, a reporter named Jerry Penicoli. Now Jerry Penicoli was a famous local reporter in Philadelphia. Until one day, news spread quickly that Jerry Pinnacoli showed up in the ER with a gerbil stuck up his butt. Oh my God. A gerbil. A gerbil. A nice, round, furry little animal, right? I, I have no clue whether he was alive or dead, but he, he left Philadelphia. He left Philadelphia. He became a national reporter. Um, I, I think he went out to D.C. actually. So it was, yeah, but he avoided that whole, it was an embarrassment. It was a huge embarrassment. So Reddit. Um, you know, I'm sure he claims that it's not true, but I know the ER workers at that time there was no HIPAA law, <laughs> so, so you can't do that now, ladies and gentlemen. Right? You can get sued and lose your license if you leak information like that and they catch you leaking it. Yeah, you'll lose your license. You'll never see a patient so again. Part of that law, do you have to make something prior to the law being made? I, you know what? That's a good question too. I don't know how far back the statute would allow for prosecution under the under the law, under the HIPAA law, and. Um, yeah, so 
It's just like the Affordable Health Care Act. For those of you who don't know, three major tenets of the Health Care Act is why you don't want to abolish the Health Care Act. The, the first and foremost is people with pre existing conditions cannot be in, denied for insurance coverage. Does that sound fair? Yes. I, I think that sounds fair, especially since I have lots of pre existing conditions, which means that under, under the law, I'm protected, that I cannot be denied. It. So if we remove the ACA, then guess what? Some people will that. never get health insurance because they don't, they just won't be covered. Just like some people can't get house insurance because they're in a flood zone region and they'll never get insurance for their houses. You guys didn't know that either? Yeah. So that's not fair, right? Is that fair? You buy a home and can't buy insurance? No, it's not fair. So that's why we need certain legislation, guys. That's why we need certain legislation. All right. So sell cycle. I need sell cycle. So everybody, look. S, everybody see that letter up there? S, right? S stands for synthesis. And synthesis of DNA, sure enough, is linked to replication. And that means that we're duplicating our DNA. Everybody understand that? So the S is actually that. It's all the same. S phase of my S phase of cell cycle. So, okay, from here to here. From G1, S, G2, that from there to there. They call that whole thing interphase of the cell cycle. Then you'll go mitosis or you'll go meiosis. Depends on whether you're talking about sperm cells and egg cells versus all the other cells of the human body. You ever understand that? It's as easy as that. What's the difference between sperm, egg cells, and and other cells. Anybody? Uh, reproduction. Their reproduction. Well, the moment they're reproductive, what does that mean? Well, I would, I would assume they can't be anything else. Right. But if they if they are for reproduction, and two of them need to come together to make a whole, then what is that telling you? Uh, one only has the male chromosomes. So okay, good. So he's 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 uh, teetering on only one of the two chromosomes are being carried for sex. Dad is the one that Dad. determines the sex, right? Yeah, Mom only has, so you have 23 pairs. Everyone agree? A normal cell, so a normal cell, starting G or in G0, what we call G0, which is cell senescence, means the cell's asleep. You ever understand that? Sometimes your cell's asleep, sometimes the cell is turned on to undergo mitosis. You understand? Okay? Brain cells, are they turned on to do mitosis? Right now, as adults, are they turned on to do mitosis? No, if they were, then you got some kind of brain cancer. You understand? They're off. They're in cell senescence. They're doing everything else. All the other stuff that we like to refer to as house keeping. That's everything else. Metabolism, signaling, responding, all that other stuff. Are you get me? When you're in this, when you're in this, and you want to duplicate your DNA and replicate it, you got three miles of DNA snarled up inside your nucleus. How do you expect to open it all up and duplicate it? Well, sure enough, we do it. We do it bit by bit, chunk by chunk. <clears throat> we do at the end. So th there's a theory. How do you know how to sometimes if we're born normal, we leave normal lives 40, 50 years, right? And then at 50, all of a sudden, uh, I got cancer. Why? Well, at the ends of the DNA, the ends of the DNA are referred to as telomeric ends. Those telomeric ends, because they're strand, they're unstable at the ends, and they can be chopped up by enzymes. So the cell protects them by folding them into these. At the ends, they, hold, they, they, they do the hairpin turns on them. Now what happens? That hairpin turn, you can't unfold that and redo it. So when you go to duplicate the DNA, every time you go to duplicate your DNA, your cell goes and makes a new one of itself, there's a little chunk of DNA that gets lost every single time. That telomeric ends, the ends of the chromosomes get lost. So now imagine I got a gene that's really important. It's a housekeeping gene. It tells me, it tells me, hey, is one gene it's called P53, another one is called retinoblastoma. Those genes have proteins. Those proteins control whether I go from G1 into S. 
They're called the gatekeepers of cell cycle. They'll what determine whether or not a cell will divide. Did everybody understand me? If any one of these two genes, their proteins are affected because the genes are mutated, guess what? The cell goes through cell cycle uncontrollably. And what do we call that? What do we call it? Cancer. That's cancer. You do that too much. Cell goes constantly dividing, constantly dividing, constantly dividing, constantly dividing. Never stops to come out for housekeeping. Constantly dividing, constantly dividing, constantly dividing. Why? Because it lost these guys. These guys right here. These guys that would control your ability to go from here to here. All right? So, sure enough, how do we know about these proteins? There's a disease. Look it up. It's called retinoblastoma. Children that are born who have this disease are born blind because their retina is littered with tumorous cells, guys. Do you hear me? And they're born blind. If you look it up, retinoblastoma, okay? So when this guy is bad, when RB is bad, it leads to a disease called retinoblastoma. Get decreased uh, functional RV. Could be because of mutations or whatever. It doesn't function properly. That means you can't hold. You can't hold. You go G1, SG2, mitosis, G1, SG2, mitosis, G1, SG2, mitosis. And what happens? You open up too quickly, you read too quickly, you don't do it good enough. Does everybody know what fidelity is? High fidelity versus low fidelity. Anybody? Anybody in here listening to music? Yeah, it's well, that's great. They, well, they invited me. They, yeah, come bring your class. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Uh, we are on a schedule. We got tests. Yeah, students got tests on Tuesday. Imagine me taking, yeah, guys, we're going to take the day off and go downstairs and party. Well, that's oh. just a little crazy. Um, just to clarify, so the cell cycle has to repeat itself at this continuous period. Again, it depends. If the cell cycle repeats itself constantly and never shuts off, then that that can lead to tumors and cancer. You understand? But every cell, even the red blood cell, yes, who doesn't have a nucleus, who doesn't have or you know, who doesn't have anything, still has to go through what? Still has to go through the cell cycle, duplicate its DNA, and make a copy of itself, doesn't it? Because if it doesn't do that, then what happens? You're going to run out of red blood cells. Do you agree? Yeah. Does everyone 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 agree? You'll run out of red blood cells if your red blood cells can't constantly divide to make new red blood cells. you got to be constantly making new red blood cells every 90 to 120 days. So have, have anemia. Yeah. So when people who, who have anemia, their cells, their red blood cells don't turn over quick enough. Or they don't turn over at all. So, that's like why so their number of red blood cells are too low, and that, by definition, is anemia. Now, there are different forms of yeah. anemia. It can be the number of red blood cells. It could be the amount of hemoglobin. It could be the lack of iron, the lack of folic acid, because there's, there's a lot of things that are involved in a red blood cell making hemoglobin. Okay? Now, a red blood cell making hemoglobin is probably the best example I can give you of how DNA, right, it gets opened up. So separate of it being duplicated for the purpose of cell cycle and mitosis and or meiosis, yes? Well, housekeeping says what? I, I don't want to duplicate, yeah? I want to make lots of protein to do all the other shit I got to do. You agree? Because I got a lot of other things I got to do. I can't always be stuck in making DNA. You agree? So I don't know. Okay, so today I'll, I'll spend, I don't know, uh, an hour in cell cycle. And then the rest of the time, I'll spend doing all the housekeeping stuff I need to do. And that's how I, as a cell, should normally behave. You as a cell, maybe you got a, you got, you got a different story because you're a different cell. You're a different cell line. Your job is going to be different. Everybody understand that? And that's how it is. Each cell has the same set of mechanisms, but each cell's ability to respond to those mechanisms is based on 
signals from other cells and how it responds. It's, and it's all about cell-to-cell -cell interactions. It's all about protein-protein interaction, guys. I was under the impression that like, the brain cells, for example, don't reproduce. They, they grow. They grow in size. They grow in connections. They can at times grow in number. Sometimes. Normal. I'm saying with no like pathophysiological under underlinings or underpinnings, like normal. So this is how our brains get bigger. This is how we increase neural neuronal connections. Like if you want to increase your neuronal connections as you get older, learn languages, learn how to play an instrument. Uh, I, I don't know if you can like anything that's new uh, uh, fosters new connections between the brain. And it doesn't matter what race we're from. It doesn't matter. All it matters is how many experiences we get and how soon we get them. You ever understand me? So I can take the poorest kid from the poorest ghettos, didn't matter, doesn't matter what color skin, and give him all these experiences as a little child. And sure enough, the more experiences, the more neuronal connections they'll make. But um, like, my question leads into more so like uh, when you actually uh, lose brain cells. Not necessarily everybody being in the same Normally you lose brain cells constantly. Again, there is a turnover rate. The thing is it's not, when we get there, you'll see. It's not just one brain cell. There are some brain cells who are designed to undergo this cell cycle purpose because their job is to signal to other cells how they're supposed to be forever. And so those cells are, are very important in the sustaining of those other cells. So there are cells, cells that are sustained in structure by other cells that are constantly dividing for the purpose of sending them signals to tell them to sustain those structures, please. You took all that time to make it, please keep it. Because if you don't, then you're gonna lose it and that de develops into dementia, Alzheimer's, and ultimately cell death of the brain. What about brain damage itself? <clears throat> Same thing. It's just, a, it can be abrupt or like long-term kind of chronic. You know, remember I told you like the students, my special students, okay? They do this every day at lunch for the next year. Is there gonna be an effect? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's a chronic kind of summation effect. Of, Exposure, chronic exposure, just like doing uh, this, you know, uh, fake cannabis. Oh, yeah. That people are, it's, it's, it's huge, right? Mm -hmm. Like the people are using it, even though they know it's going to make them sick, they're using it because um, they know it's going to get them in the ER and at least they're going to get some kind of treatment and maybe, you know, something else. So they're using this stuff regularly and they're showing up in the ER every three days with headaches, vomiting, some of them fall in a coma. It's like sniffing bath salts, man. I don't know about all that. That's just some dumb stuff. Cause I, I, I don't know about you. Like I eat cake all the time, but I'm not eating anybody's face. Anybody got me? <laughs> I'm not eating anybody's face. All right. You guys remember that case? Yeah. yeah. The guys, he, he was sniffing bath. Yeah. You don't want to be sniffing no bath salts, guys. Yeah. You don't want to be throwing your brain chemistry off. Sure enough, you throw your blood chemistry off. You throw your brain chemistry off. Yeah. So you want to make sure you know what you're sniffing or don't sniff it at all. Yeah. But isn't the brain different, like as a child, and then like after like, the age of ten, a little more mature? Because like lots of cases, like with kids, when they have brain damage and like they remove half the brain or they remove stuff like that, the kids. It just has to do with response to hormone. Each human, each human's different. So sure enough, you find some people who have had traumatic brain injury and they're older and they're still able to respond and recover completely. And you'd be like, wait a minute, hold on, what, what just happened here? Just like with the kid who died, who drowned, who was in the water for 58 minutes. It was, po it was posted when I was in medical school in 2004. Uh, this was a case, a case that came in the Mass General. The kid was underwater for 58 minutes, right? It, he was playing ice hockey, the ice broke, he fell into the water, he drowned. They found his body, thought he was dead. They revived him. He didn't have brain damage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what? Like, oh, no, 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 what? So now what are they doing? People who have stroke, you know what they're doing? Hey, you're having a stroke. Do you mind if we lower your body temperature? You sign on the dotted line, they put your blood through the machine, they lower your body temperature. They try to see if it can reduce the damage to the brain cells. Because there's a, there's a good thing like, have like a large like, tumor in his brain, so they removed like three quarters of his brain and left him with spinal fluid, and now like he walks and talks. Mm -hmm. They have a case where they literally 
uh, removed almost half the brain of a female child who all she was riddled with was seizures. Seizures, seizures, seizures. All she had was seizures all day long. Not only did the seizures go away, she like learned how to walk and talk just the same, didn't lose much of anything, 